You are watching the Dog Talk Show. I'm living with a sickle cell trait, but growing up, I knew I had sickle cell disease because I had all the symptoms and signs of sickle cell. I first got my f the first symptoms at seven years when I had my knees uh, swelling and uh, most of my joints uh, paining, and I couldn't walk. At first, we hadn't done the test, but in uh, 2002, after my primary seven, we did the test and we did a sickling test which came out positive. So since we had uh, in our family, my uncle, my paternal uncle had sickle cell, I continued uh, uh, taking the medication as someone with sickle cell. I did the test in 2008 and still the test was positive. So I continued with the uh, same treatment as someone with sickle cell. And not until 2011, when I was in my third year at university, that's when I did the confirmatory test for sickle cell, and it came out that uh, I was a carrier. I didn't believe, because I was asking myself, why do I get the pain? Yet the test is telling me that I have that trait. So because for someone to have that trait, in the medical books, it means you don't have, you are not supposed to have the, the pain, except in uh, extreme conditions. But for me, I had the pain even without the extreme condition. Uh, growing up, uh, when I was in and out of the hospital in 2004, so some people thought uh, it was wastage of, of, of money and uh, other resources to pay for my fees. So some, some people were, were advising my parents to get me out of school because they thought if you have sickle cell, you are going to die, which is not really the case. Because for someone to have sickle cell, you can live at, at you can live any age. Alhaja Laguda, she's uh, the 93 years now. She has uh, children and uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So having sickle cell doesn't stop someone from getting married, from having children. Because the sickle cell does not affect the reproductive system. It only affects the red blood cells. If you were to take, the, let's say, two capsules a day, and the cheapest you can get hydroxylia is 1,000 per capsule, it's a challenge for some people. And even the test that goes with the hydroxylia. Because it's not like an uh, over-the-counter drug where you go ask, uh, buy it from a pharmacy and go and take it. It still needs more tests to be done before and even monitoring, which becomes a challenge to very many people. The ministry has done a lot and even uh, organize, uh, advocacy organization to set up uh, sickle cell clinics, but they are not everywhere. We really need to have uh, clinics at least at every health center for. The VHTs needs to be trained and to know how to identify these people with sickle cell. Because sometimes people are in the communities and they don't know what, what their children are suffering from. But if the VHTs are trained on how to identify, they can be able to, to, uh, to identify the people with sickle cell and refer them to the nearby health facilities. You are watching the Dog Talk Show. So, Dr. Munabi, what could be, what could go wrong if someone has sickle cell? Is it as bad as it sounds? So, the disease called sickle cell anemia has what we call a hallmark, and the hallmark is pain. And this pain can occur in two ways. It can occur in an acute or an immediate or pain that occurs without you knowing or it can occur in the chronic form where you have a complication and it leads you to continuously have pain. I will talk more about the acute forms and you will find that a child has 
pain in any part of the body. It can be the limbs or the legs, the arms, the chest, the hip. And this pain is so severe that you are not able to do your usual activities. You cannot get up from bed. You cannot walk. They cannot go to school. They're always crying. They can't the even leave. Much. They can't even leave the house. The pain is very severe. And we normally grade the pain depending on how severe it is. And when it's an acute painful crisis, which we call a vaso-occlusive crisis, or you might hear people saying VOC, it does lead to a very painful event. And when we manage this, which we'll talk about a bit later, we do two main things. We give a lot of fluids and we give painkillers. Another common complication is loss of blood or anemic crisis. These children, because of the sickle cell, the red blood cells are destroyed quite early. If you look at a normal person, a normal person's red blood cells live for about 120 days. A child with sickle cell disease with a sickle cell can live for only up to 20 days. So the turnaround time for the red blood cells is very high. So their blood levels are very low. And when they get these painful crises, they trigger off a breakdown in the red blood cells and they can get also the anemia or the loss of blood crisis. Are there any other problems sickle cell? Sickle cell might cause. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, the other issue is that these children are actually prone to infections because of the continued wear and tear of body cells. Mm. Their body's immunity sometimes is defective, and so they are prone to acquiring infections or recurrent infections. Okay. And uh, they also compound. They com they build onto the other already um, further weaken the body. Um, they may actually also cause the pain, um, and and they worsen the general picture of the patient. Okay. So infections. Infections also. Exactly, there. and the other complication which may come about in the long term. So maybe if I may go back a little bit. This. Uh, blockage of blood vessels and therefore causation of pain can be reversed if it is addressed early. Okay? So most of the long-term complications happen if at all the, the, the condition wasn't handled urgently. Mm, the acute early. conditions. Exactly. The acute pain crisis. Exactly. And for example, if there was um, vasoclusion or blockage of a vessel leading to a critical part of the body, like the brain, like the kidney, and different other parts of the body, like the bone tip at the, at the joint, hip joint. So then you have long-term complication. Actually, many of our, of our, some of our, of our patients have actually tended to present with complication relating to the hip joint, whereby one of the, the bones of the leg has actually been affected and the tips have died at the joint. So that happens as a long-term complication. Okay. Other long-term complications, some of the children develop stroke, again resulting from partly blockage of the blood flow to a critical part of the brain though it may also arise from other mechanisms. Okay. Others have had injuries to the kidneys. Others have had complications of the heart relating to the long or recurrent episodes mm. of anemia, low blood level. Okay. It can also injure the heart. So it's quite a very <clears throat> devastating disease if a child has yes. to suffer a stroke yes. because people commonly know mm. strokes come because of pressure yes. or diabetes and it's usually in a grown up person. Yes, but if a child as young as, what's, what's the common age at which you would see these strokes? So does it, is there a particular age where they can occur? 
Yes, yeah. there is. So uh, people with sickle cell disease, they normally get strokes as early as two years of age, and there is a range between two to seven, but they peak at around five. So as you mentioned earlier, the risk of stroke as we grow up, it's normally an elderly person with hypertension and diabetes. In this case, you have a young, well child running around playing and gets this acute event of a stroke. And the stroke is not reversible, so they live with the stroke from two years all the way up. So it becomes the chronic now, the chronic complication. Okay, so um, how can the condition be reversed? If a child with sickle cell gets his acute crisis, what can be done to save them from getting strokes, from getting heart disease, the chronic complications? Is there anything that can be done? Okay, so basically, the best thing to do is to know that, to get to know that my child has sickle cell anemia. And therefore, enroll in, into a chronic care setting. Mm, like a clinic, a sickle cell clinic. Like a sickle cell clinic. Mm -hmm. um, they are usually actually sickle cell clinics, but um, in different settings. Okay? And usually this happens at, uh, at, at the big hospitals. Okay, which are largely public hospitals. But I know there are some good faith-based hospitals that are big or some private hospitals that are big. So you'd want to have your child in a chronic care setting mm. where they will um, assess, periodic, uh, periodically assess this child and then know how the, the child is progressing and address mm. the, the, the complications early and also teach you how to care for this child at home. Okay. Because like, we, later on we shall discuss the how to care for children how at home. How to care for children at home. Yes. But <clears throat> most important is yes. we have to recognize that the child may be a yes. sickler. Yes. And get them to the clinic. Exactly. Very quickly. Yes. That way you can at least minimize the risk of getting the chronic. Exactly. The chronic complications like the strokes or the heart disease or kidney disease. Yes, please. Early recognition yes. and getting early treatment may prevent future problems. Perfect. Uh, which, goes to see, which goes to ask, is the sickle cell curable? That's a very interesting question. I would say no. At the moment, it's not curable. However, there are some interventions or studies which are being done called genetic changes, which can actually reverse the defect. So gene therapy is something that is being investigated by scientists, but it's not something that we would want to say is a, a cure right now. Okay, so at the moment there's no definitive cure for the sickle cell. Okay, so um, after the break, we will, we will uh, discuss more about the prevention. If your child has sickle cell, what can you do to prevent them from getting these dreaded complications like the pain crisis, they are strokes or the kidney disease. And if someone who is normal, how can they prevent their children from getting sickle cell? We will discuss this in the shortly after the break. Send in your questions and comments on our social media platforms. Stay tuned. You are watching the Dog Talk Show.